To say you gotta know somebody or know somebody to give somewhere these days. Good afternoon. Get ready for Addicted to Real Estate Radio. I'm Phil Falcone with my co-host Jeremy Ricci here on WWDB 860 AM every Thursday from 3 o'clock to 4 o'clock. Glad you could join us. If you want to ask us a question or if you have a real estate need, give me a call 267-988-2000. You're probably wondering, addicted to real estate. Who is addicted to real estate? What is addicted to real estate? Well, first and foremost, we're professional real estate investors. So if you've got a house you'd like to sell or you'd like to talk to us about potentially listing it for you or selling it to us, Give us a call at 267-988-2000. We buy houses. We love to buy houses. We're basically guys who play Monopoly for a living, acquiring houses. So we love to talk to you about your deal. We also have a real estate agency called Addicted to Real Estate. We have three offices, one in Montgomeryville, one in Hatboro, and one in Huntington Valley. If you're a realtor or a real estate agent who would like to be more active as a real estate investor, then Addicted to Real Estate is the place for you. We are owned by real estate investors, founded by real estate investors, and we definitely promote investing as a a function of building the gaps between real estate agents and real estate investors. We also are an education company. We have meetings every month. Our next meeting is coming up on March 16th, and the topic is how to get rich. Buying commercial real estate. That's a meeting you do not want to miss. You're going to learn some things there that could change your life. That's the funny thing about commercial real estate. One deal can give you something to support your family for the rest of your life. Um, So it's something you really want to come out and learn about. That's in Warminster on March 16th. If you'd like to be invited to all of our meetings, Visit our website, addictedtorealestate.com, put your name and email address in there, and I will send you an invitation every month to our meetings. So, how's everybody doing today? I'm doing great. We actually have a guest here, uh, Zach, from our real estate agency. He's a young agent, and uh, he's in the studio with us today. So, say hi, Zach. Hi, guys. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we're going to get to Zach later on, and we're going we're gonna to talk about how he got started in this business and some of the amazing things that you've done already. It's a great story. So if you guys want to, if you're thinking about getting started in this business and you want to learn, Zach's a great guy to uh, listen to his story because in his first couple of years, he's really done some great stuff. So uh, Jeremy, what are we going to be talking about today besides Zach? Aside from Zach, we have some uh, questions that were emailed in. You can send your questions in to questions at addictedtorealestate.com. And uh, three questions we have today is, can you buy houses with credit cards? Well, we've done that, right? <laughs> I've done that, yeah. Sure. <laughs> kind of rephrase that question a little bit, but that's that's essentially um, one of the ways we bought houses in the past. Well, how and, can I rephrase the question? <laughs> you want me to email the person back? I mean, what do you mean? We've done it, so we'll, we'll explain a little bit how. We know what he means. Yeah, we, sure, we know sure, what he wants. Sure. Yeah. When's the next meeting? What's it all about? So we you, you went over that a little bit, Phil, about the commercial real estate, so we'll talk about that a little bit. And if Trump wins the election, will that help the real estate market? Hmm. Yeah. Or whether that help real estate, you know? I that, definitely have some opinions yeah. on that question. So, also we have Zach Rank with us, and he's going to discuss. Uh, he he was he started out as an apprentice in our office, and he's mm-hmm. going to talk about how the apprenticeship went worked out for him thus far, and he became an agent as well. So um, we're going to learn about that. How do, how do we all get started in real estate? Today's uh, if you're thinking about getting real estate, get get into real estate. Uh, a lot of times people say, "How do I get started?" and we'll we don't know how you should get started, but we'll tell you how the three of us did. So okay. that'd be a great topic. Yeah. All right, that sounds great. Stick around as we're going to discuss these topics and much more. You are listening to Addicted to Real Estate Radio. We'll be right back. As a real estate agent, you know that most people buy a house once every seven years. Imagine working with clients that buy seven houses every year. At Addicted to Real Estate, they teach you how to work with investors because they are investors. Located in Montgomeryville, Hatboro, and Huntington Valley, work at an agency built for investors, buy investors, and finally learn how to invest yourself. Addicted to Real Estate Agency. Call them now, 215-321-SELL. 215-321-SELL. Hi, my name is Phil Falcone. I wrote a book called Addicted to Real Estate, Why I Can't Stop and Why You Should Start. And if you'd love to see an investment book written by a Philadelphian about investing in Philadelphia... 
I'm your man. You can check out my book at addictedtorealestate.com with the number two. I have a free web TV show there. I have free investment forms for real estate investors. And I have my book that you can check out, Addicted to Real Estate, Why I Can't Stop and Why You Should Start. And the website is Addicted to Real Estate with the number two dot com. Hi, I'm Larry Steinhaus, and I'm addicted to real estate. Are you a real estate investor? Do you know the value of having a real estate license? It's awesome. You get to make even more money and get exposed to deals you probably would have missed. Well, today is your lucky day. I will pay for your real estate license. Find out more by calling me at 215-378-9190. That's right. I will pay for your license. Call now, 215-378-9190. Addicted to real estate, bridging the gap between investors and realtors. 215-378-9190. I'm Phil Falcone from Executech Suites. Do you have a voicemail machine answering your business calls during the day? Oh, please tell me it's not true. I have an answering service for you that only costs $99 a month. We're real humans. That's right. We have live humans answering the phone in the name of your company and patching the calls to you for only $99 a month. And there are no contracts, so you can try it out anytime you like and cancel it whenever you like. Executech Suites, 215 942 76 I'm Phil Falcone from Executech Suites. I got a question for you. What do you get for $4.95 a month at Executech Suites? You get an office big enough for one person. You get the furniture in that office. You get the telephone on the desk. You get the telephone number. You get the fax number. You get the internet. You get two full-time receptionists to answer the phone in the name of your company and patch the calls to you, whether you're in the office, in your car, or at home sleeping on a couch. You get the conference rooms, you get the mailboxes, you get the printer, the copy, the scanner, you get the janitorial service, the utilities, and free coffee. I know it's hard to believe that you could get all those things for $495 a month, but it's true. 67 Buck Road in Huntington Valley, Executech Suites. Give us a call, 215-942-7701, 215-942-7701. Welcome back to Addicted to Real Estate. Well, uh, people co- email us questions all the time. You can email us at uh, phil at addicted to real estate dot com with the number two phil at addicted to real estate dot com. If you've got a question, and maybe we'll pick it to uh, talk about it on the air. And here is Jeremy with our questions. So the first question: Can you buy houses with a credit card? Well, in Detroit, you could probably buy twenty of them with one credit card. <laughs> <laughs> But I actually, I, I bought a house. Um, I had a house under contract, and I bought it with uh, cash advances on a credit cards. And um, I'm sure you've done that too, Phil. And and I think Larry's dialing in from some remote. Is Larry on the line? Hey, Larry, you over there? I'm here, man. I'm here. Okay. Tell us what's going on, man. Where you, where are you on a cruise ship? I am on the cruise ship. I am on the Oasis of the Seas, which is uh, which is actually. Uh, awesome cruise. I'm having a blast. Uh, we went to St. Martin, St. Thomas, and uh, and Bahamas so far. Where are you now? And it's a bunch of real estate people here. We're all having a, we're all talking about real estate. As a matter of fact, uh, oh boy, I'm gonna have to talk to you offline, Phil. I think I just raised three million dollars. That's great. Bring it back. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it back. You gotta in find a some real estate to put it in. Can you get it through TSA? Yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> so where where are you so right now? Where, which of the, are, you are you on an there? island now, or where are you? No, no, I'm actually I'm actually uh, I'm sitting in. Um, I actually had to find it's a little windy today, so I had to find a quiet place. So I'm sitting in a wine bar right now, which is on the ship, a beautiful wine bar, and uh, I'm actually having a I'm actually having a pina colada instead of a, instead of a glass of wine. Well, we don't. Uh, that's but, good because we don't. Uh, we're not open to having uh, alcoholic uh, drinks while we're on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> not at the station anyway, so you're remote. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so, um, so this cost, is this costing you like $7.99 a minute to call in here? <laughs> you know, it might be, but you guys are worth it, and, and the audience is worth it, and I'm sure that we're having a good conversation, and, and I haven't heard anything before it. So where are we, guys? Have, uh, we were talking about the questions that were mailed in. One of them was, can you buy houses with a credit card or with credit right. cards? Have you ever done that? I've done that too. Yeah, I've actually done that too. That's okay. amazing. It's funny well, let's how. Let's hear about it. Like, Tell us about the deal you thought. did. How'd you do a deal? So what with I did was I, I was just exactly what I did. I did cash advances. Uh, you know, I went to the bank, and you know, it's funny because you know you got to cash, you get a cash advance in your credit card. First of all, the interest starts the day you borrow the money. Uh, it's not like it's not like a regular you know transaction. And also, you know, sometimes it's uh, fifteen, twenty, or twenty-five percent interest. 
But, uh, you know, a while back, I had enough room on my credit card that I was able to get enough cash advances to buy a house. And I bought it and uh, quickly refinanced it. And a little interesting because I had to jump on it because it was a great deal. You know, we, we know what happens with banks where they just won't give you enough money for a great deal right away. So we so I bought it on the credit card, refinanced it, and it was a great deal. It was about, I think it was somewhere near sixty five or 70000 uh between four cards. Hmm. How about you, Jeremy? How did you do a deal with credit cards? So my situation was I had a, a wholesale deal, a deal where I got it under contract and I was going to assign the contract to another investor. So one of the things that we talk about in our real estate meetings is that you can become a wholesaler and get properties under contract and sell sell those contracts. And um, the, the guy that was going to buy the property for me backed out at the last minute. And my purchase price was twenty five grand, so I had to scrounge around and get the twenty five grand together. I think I borrowed eight thousand from my grandmother, and the rest of it was from okay, cash correct. advances on credit cards. So um, I ended up buying that deal, uh, and then just shortly thereafter went and got a, a home equity line of credit against the property, maybe a week after closing, so I could pay off my grandmother, pay off the credit cards, and uh, and also paid myself the wholesale fee um, that I would have made had I wholesaled it to this guy. And the neat, neat thing about doing it that way is it was proceeds of a loan, so it wasn't taxable because it wasn't it w- wasn't earned income. It was actually proceeds of a loan. So that was kind of the first uh, wholesale to yourself deal that I did, where I actually wholesaled a property to myself, kept the wholesale fee, and kept the property and kept all the benefits that came with that: the cash flow, the appreciation, the depreciation, the um, amortization. Well, it's not really amortization. <laughs> I was paying interest only, but uh, mm-hmm. but that was a neat deal. That was my first rental. Well, uh, in my book, Addicted to Real Estate, the first book that I wrote, um, I have a chapter called The All Money Down Technique. And when I first got into business in 1989, this was the way that I built up my portfolio. So um, basically what the concept was is I was buying row homes in uh, in Mayfair for roughly um, somewhere between uh, thirty, forty, fifty thousand, 40, 50,000 in that kind of price range. So I would buy these houses with a line of credit or with credit cards or whatever way I could scrounge together 30, 40 grand. And then the first thing you do is you fix up the property. So there goes some more money that goes on the credit cards. Maybe another five or eight grand goes into the property. And then you you rent the property out. You put some good tenants into this property. And all of a sudden, this vacant house that was sitting there for sale is now a money-making machine. It's a business now that makes a profit. So then what... Back in the day, in the early 90s, you could do this, and then you would go to a bank and you would say, here's the situation, I've got this house, it's making money, and I don't have a mortgage on it, And because I really didn't. I had like lines of credit secured against other properties or credit cards that were essentially secured personally against my credit. And so now that I acquired the property, now that I've fixed the property up, it looked good, it would appraise for more. So appraiser, an appraiser might go down there after I contracted a mortgage company or a bank to get me a loan, and the appraiser would put a number on it. And one of the reasons that I love doing it in Mayfair, Mayfair had really a unique situation where the houses sometimes were approximately a $5,000 price difference from one street to the next. So there were some, some – if, if you went easterly in the eastern direction in Mayfair – each block was approximately $5,000 worse as you went closer to the river. And as you went closer towards the westerly direction, the properties went up approximately 5000 Now, it didn't go up 5000 every block, but let's just say that wherever you were, you could go three or four blocks that way, it's five grand cheaper. Three or four blocks that way, it was five grand more expensive. And, and it did sort of step up as you went every three or four blocks. So what, it, what made it really cool was... When a bank went to get the numbers that they wanted, and this was before Dodd-Frank, they could pretty much go in this neighborhood and go pick the three properties that they were going to base the appraisal on four or five blocks to the west, and there was your easy to get the house appraised for higher numbers. So the the math just worked so easy. So then the bank would give me a loan. I'd get back 100% of the money, sometimes 105%, sometimes 95%, sometimes 90 Who cares? When you're dealing with a house that's $50,000, if you're off a few percent, the house costs you a couple of grand to buy it. And then as soon as I got the money back, what did I do next? Bought another house. You do it again. You do it all over again. Do it again. 
You that, use a line of credit on the house that you just bought to have a down payment on the next house. <laughs> yeah, hey, look, I mean, I build up a, a, a portfolio of 20-something properties that way before I even tried any other techniques. What When something works for me, man, I just run with it. Yeah, and here's a, here's a really good suggestion for anyone listening. First of all, go, you know, call your credit card today and see if you can get an increase in your credit limit. Try to ask for two, three, four thousand dollar increases on your credit limit. If you have four or five of them and you get those credit limit increases, you can, uh, you know, you can you can get enough to obviously buy a house. But here's here's a really neat trick. Uh, you probably noticed that every January and February, the credit card companies send you those super checks, and they're typically zero percent interest for 18 months or 12 months. Maybe they have a three percent fee, but hey, three percent to borrow money at three percent even up front, that's a that's a great bargain. So. So, you know, you, you write those checks and you can either buy a house with them or you can absolutely do repairs in them. So if you're doing flips and you're looking for the money to do flips, the place to find that money is from those credit card checks that you get in January and February. Good tip. Okay, what's our next question? So somebody asked about our next meeting and what's it all about. Uh, if you haven't been to one of our real estate investing meetings, we have them on Meetup. We're also just go to addictedtorealestate.com and you put your name and email address in there and you'll get invited to these meetings. And uh, the next one is about commercial real estate, right, Phil? It's, it's your, your forte and your passion has been changing these uh, greenhouses into red hotels, right? Three, four it's greenhouses. It's not just about hotel. commercial real estate. It's about how to get rich buying commercial real estate, <laughs> right? If you come out to our meetings, you'll see, I mean, the, we always have a main topic that we like to talk about, but we also always leave some time to answer the questions of the participants at the meeting. So if you come out, you know... Don't worry if maybe commercial real estate is something that maybe you're not quite ready for right now. Come on out, meet the people, listen to what we're doing. Many of the things that you do in commercial real estate cross over to the residential real estate world. And what we also do at our meetings is we usually meet for about two hours. We have a formal, very professional meeting. Then after the meeting, we go down to the meeting after the meeting. Now, the meeting after the meeting is the real meeting. That's the meeting you want to be at. You get to hang out with us and talk to us personally and figure out ways that we can all help each other. So I hope people come out. The next one is March 16th. At, it's in Warminster, PA. It's at Mike's York Street Bar and Grill. We rent out the whole second floor, and we have space for everybody. So come on out. It's uh, $20, and we're going to talk some serious real estate. So that's what the next meeting is about. And if you can learn about commercial real estate, it's, it's fascinating because it, it, it can be very, very exciting because you're buying something that potentially could be, you know, millions of dollars or a million dollars. And, and the, the rewards from a deal like that, if you make a good deal, can be amazing. I did a deal in 2006 where I bought a building for $2.1 million with none of my own money. I had $10,000 in the bank when I acquired this property for $2.1 million dollars. And it's a tremendous story. Uh, 47 offices in this building. And I can tell you that I look back on the day that I bought it as a wonderful day because it's been cutting <laughs> me a big fat check ever since. And that was 10 years ago. In October, it'll be officially 10 years. I've been reaping the rewards of a, of a great real estate investing business decision. You gonna have a party at the building? Ten year anniversary? What? <laughs> I don't know. I'm not big on that. <laughs> part. If you're gonna have a party, the building should have a party for the tenants who've been paying me the, yeah, the sure. rent for the sure. last sure. ten years. What you do? You have those yeah, you we know, holiday we, party, whatever. Yeah, we have, we actually should do some more of that. Remember, we had a real estate meeting there once outside. Yeah. That was yeah, cool. yeah, that was great. A that barbecue. Was cool. We should do that. Yeah. We had a big barbecue. We fed everybody, and we talked, DJ. <laughs> we talked to real estate, and then we had a poker tournament. At the end, the reason we did that is because there's no better way to get to know somebody than to take their money. <laughs> so you play poker with them. <laughs> it really bonds a relationship, doesn't it, Larry? I think I've taken some of your money before. That's true. That's true. <laughs> you asked. <have. laughs> yeah, I like to play poker, so. Yeah, so yes, this, it, life of, this life of being a real estate investor is so boring. All we do is... Uh, have parties, go on cruise ships, go to Colorado, and play poker. Yeah, I'm yeah. the only one of us here who's really working. You guys are just goofing off. <laughs> well, Incredible. you got to go somewhere soon. You know, we can handle it. We can handle it. I know. I don't like to lose in any competition. I'm going to book a vacation just so 
you guys, you know, I can be one up on you guys. And you you have to go out 12 miles <laughs> to sea before they turn on the poker machine out there, right, Larry? <laughs> when you go on the cruise ship? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you get 12 miles out and then ding, 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 and then now you can all of a sudden you're – you're in uh, international so, waters. So you should call it from the Eiffel Tower. Yeah, right. No. Actually, I'm going to see. The Eiffel Tower. I'm taking That'll my uh, taking my father and my uncle down to see some Phillies games uh, in a couple of weeks down in Siesta Key. So we're going to go see the Phillies play oh, the okay. Yankees and the Orioles. Let's get on to our uh, last question. Yeah, the last question. If Trump wins the election, will that help real estate? I don't oh, know. Boy. I mean, I'm not a, a real estate guy. <laughs> I'm, I'm not a genius, but I I think I'd have to say yes with a capital Y. T. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd have to say yes. How could it not? I mean, he's not going to force legislation against himself, is he? <laughs> sure, sure. He understands it too. Right. I I think. It, Here's a- I don't want to get into a big political discussion, but I'd have to I'd have to say yes. I would think it would be a resounding yes if you're invested in real estate, even if it's only your primary uh, residence. I think you're going yeah, right. to, you're going to do very well. I'm going to make a bunch of people really angry right now, and I'm going to say that uh, if Bernie Sanders gets in, and uh, and 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 we go to fifteen dollars an hour minimum wage, well, the three of us and a lot of other real estate agents are going to be very very happy. What do you think of that? I don't. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think so. <laughs> I think that what's going to happen is rents are going to go up. So I think all those people are hanging out signs right now that says instead of fifteen dollars an hour minimum wage, they're hanging out signs that says give Larry Stein out three hundred dollars more a month rent. I don't know. I mean, housing housing is um, you know wa- I don't know that wages and housing. Yeah, the the, the dollar. The, you know, if the, they force everyone to pay a higher minimum wage that only is relevant to people that are tenants that are below uh $15 an hour do you have tenants that you rent to already that are below $15 an hour Larry uh just a, just a, not some but not all yeah I was going to say I mean it's not yeah, going to it's not going to some of them are on the fringe my, my, some of the you know, some of the, the secondary income is $13 an hour you know the you know those one of the spouses is $13 yeah. where the other one is maybe 40 or 50,000 you know well, here's what I would say to people who are are earning a minimum wage I'd say you should come out to a real estate meeting okay because right, exactly. you would be surprised to learn you know this is not a gimmick what I'm about to tell you you don't need your own money you don't need to have credit what you need is knowledge and you also need us because we're the guys that will share that knowledge with you. We're going to teach you how to buy real estate with none of your own money. We're going to teach you how to find your first house, and that is going to be something amazing. Okay, March 16th, come on out to Warminster. If you go to addictedtorealestate.com, you put your name and email address in on my website, I will personally send you an invitation to come to our meetings each and every month. So stick around, guys, because uh, we are about to discuss – how Zach Rank got into this business, knocked on our door, and he basically said, if I work for you guys for free, would you teach me this business? We're going to come back with Zach, and he's going to tell you all about his knowledge that he's obtained from us over the last couple of years in the real estate business. You are listening to Addicted to Real Estate Radio. We'll be right back. Hi, my name is Phil Falcone. I wrote a book called Addicted to Real Estate, Why I Can't Stop and Why You Should Start. And if you'd love to see an investment book written by a Philadelphian about investing in Philadelphia, I'm your man. You can check out my book at addictedtorealestate.com with the number two. I have a free web TV show there. I have free investment forms for real estate investors. And I have my book that you can check out, Addicted to Real Estate, Why I Can't Stop and Why You Should Start. And the website is addictedtorealestate with the number two dot com. When dealing with your home financing, you need a lender you can trust. A mortgage lender like Thomas Farris at First Choice Loan Services Incorporated. The purchase of your home will likely be the largest financial investment you will make in your lifetime. Work with a mortgage provider who considers your long-term financial goals and puts you first. Thomas Farris at First Choice Loan Services will provide you competitive mortgage rates and service beyond belief for every step of the loan process. Call Thomas Farris at 215-983-8649 today to visit about your mortgage needs. Thomas Farris, NMLS, number is 785398. First Choice Loan Services Incorporated, NMLS, number 210764, equal housing lender. 
As a real estate agent, you know that most people buy a house once every seven years. Imagine working with clients that buy seven houses every year. At Addicted to Real Estate, they teach you how to work with investors because they are investors. Located in Montgomeryville, Hatboro, and Huntington Valley, work at an agency built for investors, buy investors, and finally learn how to invest yourself. Addicted to Real Estate Agency. Call them now, 215-321-SELL. 215-321-SELL. I'm Phil Falcone from Executech Suites. Do you have a voicemail machine answering your business calls during the day? Oh, please tell me it's not true. I have an answering service for you that only costs $99 a month. We're real humans. That's right. We have live humans answering the phone in the name of your company and patching the calls to you for only $99 a month. And there are no contracts, so you can try it out anytime you like and cancel it whenever you like. Executech Suites, 215 942 Hi, I'm Larry Steinas, and I'm addicted to real estate. Have you been thinking about getting your real estate license? Well, have I got news for you. We are currently training new agents to be addicted to real estate. If you are tired of your day-to-day, paycheck-to-paycheck life, I will pay for your real estate school and your license. Become addicted to real estate on me. Hurry before we change our minds. Call me at 215-378-9190. That's 215-378-9190. Call now, 215-378-9190. I'm Phil Falcone from Executech Suites. I got a question for you. What do you get for four ninety five a month at Executech Suites? You get an office big enough for one person. You get the furniture in that office. You get the telephone on the desk. You get the telephone number. You get the fax number. You get the internet. You get two full time receptionists to answer the phone in the name of your company and patch the calls to you, whether you're in the office, in your car, or at home sleeping on a couch. You get the conference rooms, you get the mailboxes, you get the printer, the copy, the scanner, you get the janitorial service, the utilities, and free coffee. I know it's hard to believe that you could get all those things for $495 a month, but it's true. 67 Buck Road in Huntington Valley, Executech Suites. Give us a call, 215-942-7701, 215-942-7701. Welcome back to Addicted to Real Estate Radio. And on this segment, we have a special guest here. We have Zach Rank. Zach is a real estate agent. He's in our office, and he started out. Uh, well, Zach, how, how old were you when you came knocking on our door at Addicted to Real Estate? I was in my early 20s, maybe 21, 22. Yeah, so 22 right years old. Zach and his girlfriend come walking up to the door and say, <laughs> we have the I Buy Houses store up at 309, just mm-hmm. north of Montgomeryville. Mm-hmm. And they say, um, hey, how can I – I want to learn – I want to re- learn real estate investing. How can I get yeah. involved in this? Yeah. I, I still remember standing there in the office talking to you, explaining what my goals were and trying to figure out if you could help me and if I could help you and make something work out that, that we were both happy with. And in the past, we've actually had uh, – we have a billboard out front. We can a marquee that we can change the letters and whatnot. And I, I have put out in the past, Investor Seeks Apprentice. I've never seen it. That was <laughs> Yeah, you never saw that sign, but you just came in on your own, which is, which is very commendable. <laughs> Never saw it. Good marketing, by the way. Yeah. But never well, that was before. It was before. It was, it was a couple of years before you came in. Uh-huh. So Zach and his girlfriend come in, and they, they want to get started in real estate investing, and they had time. I, yeah. I think yeah. they had time, um, but they were looking to build wealth. Yeah. Oh. And we had education, so it was kind of a barter situation if you think about it. We're mm-hmm. we're exchanging uh, education for help in the office and time, and they got to uh, look over our shoulder and. and how did you? What was your first experience? Like, how did you? Um, you know, how was it for you in the beginning? And, and tell Working us a little bit you about your story. In the beginning, it was it was a lot of fun. I, I had a lot of energy to begin with. You know, I had attended other real estate seminars, and I realized that I couldn't get the information I needed f- from there. I need to find <laughs> another outlet, someone that that knew the business. And by seeing your place all the time, I knew you guys had been experienced. So working with you guys. Um, and just hanging out with you every day, accompanying you on appointments and inspections and, and hearing the conversations in the office, how you're putting deals together and who's helping you put those deal together, those deals together really connected the dots for me and, and helped me build a better understanding of what real estate is and how it's done and how it makes you money. I want to hear about the seminar you were out and at and how it, lend, right. how it got you to come to our office. Right. So it, it really starts a little bit before that. I had just gotten back from, from South America. I'd lived there for a number of years. And I came back when my girlfriend uh, – I came back to the States when my girlfriend graduated college. And we were living at home in her parents' place. I didn't have a job yet. I knew I didn't want a W-2. I'm a kind of guy that wants to work for myself and make my own living. 
and real estate was what I what I decided to do. So I heard we were in the car together, and I heard an advertisement on the radio for rich for a rich dad seminar, free seminar. Went out to the free seminar, and it was an hour long. Got you hyped up, and it was a two hundred dollars sale for a three for a three day seminar, which we went to. And that three day seminar was a was a sale pitch sales pitch for a twenty thousand all the way up to hundred thousand dollar training. And at that time, I I knew I wanted to learn it, but not twenty uh, twenty thousand dollars. <laughs> not not, <laughs> not that only much. gamble twenty thousand dollars on. Yeah. <laughs> right. So I, I looked at my alternatives, and uh, that's what pointed me in your guys' direction. Really, is is that set my search out to find you? Hmm. That's a great story. It just goes to show you, like it sounds to me like they weren't really interested in teaching you real estate investing, but they were definitely interested in separating you from your money. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't have the money, but I had the time. I had the willingness to learn. Well, there's a lot of people that go through trainings like that, that spend all that money. And, and you know, I've heard people say that they needed to do that in order to be committed. Uh, to me, I don't know. I think I think spending you know, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 on education, I mean, you know, surely it's cheaper than a college education. Mm-hmm. But um, but there's so many ways you can learn. You know, there's, there's free ways. Phil has the YouTube videos on, on, on YouTube. You can listen to those. Uh, copy of the book, Addicted to Real Estate, yeah. 20 bucks. Yeah. You know, you come to the meetings, those are $20 a meeting. Wealth of information you know, the meeting. Our apprentice program, help out in the office, and, and you can learn by osmosis. I mean, I think in the first six months, Zach probably had more, you know, what it took me years right. and years to amass just because he was kind of looking over our shoulders as we were doing deals. Yeah, I would mm-hmm. say that uh, he learned in a year and a half, two years, what took me 16 years to learn. Now, he's not 10 times smarter than me, <laughs> but he was able to do it because of the access to the right people, which, yeah. which I didn't have. Yeah, and I never, I never knew where to look. I just thought I would, you know, go around and, and find a house and, that I was going to buy as an investment. And the, agents, the agent that took me around said, you know, you're going to lose money for the first several years, <laughs> but don't worry. It'll Negative get better after flow. that. Thank goodness I didn't pull the trigger back then, mm. you know, not, not knowing how to buy wholesale deals, not knowing how to buy – you know, creative financing deals. Zach, what your first, um, the first deal that you did, you know, through the office or just that you did on your mm-hmm. own here was it was like a, a lease option. Or it was a lease? sandwich lease option. Yeah, so yes. that was a pretty creative yes. deal. Not, not For our first of, deal, that was a, a, a creative one. Mm-hmm. So tell us a little about that, how how that went down. It was a, it was an appointment with a seller that um, he had just bought the home less than a year ago. He was going through a divorce. He well, he had actually finished a divorce. He wanted to get out of the house. He wanted to move to New York where, where he had another home, and he had no equity in the property. And he started renovations but didn't complete them. He had also lost a job, but he was, but, and he was retired, so he had some income but not enough to, to really finish the work. He needed a way out is what he needed. And I gave him a solution. I helped him accomplish his goals and stop the bleeding on his house. So I agreed to take over his bills. I agreed to take over his, the expense of his mortgage, the expense of his insurance, the expense of his taxes through the power of a lease. So I leased the property from him to cover his costs, which enabled him to get to where he was going without the without maintaining those expenses. And I controlled the property through the lease, and I told him I, I'm going to rent it out to someone else who hopefully is going to want to buy it. So I took it on myself to, to market the property and, and find a tenant who was willing to pay more than what I'm renting it from the guy, the seller, and um, who also someone who was also willing to, to purchase the property in, in a few years. So you had a lease with the right to sublease. Right. And then you also took an option. Mm-hmm. with You had an option to buy the property mm-hmm. with the right to sub-option, essentially. Exactly. So you... you you're making a spread both on the monthly and then you're making a spread on your strike price yes. versus what they yes. have the right to buy it for. So, so the, the gain for me is a little bit each month, but the, the real payoff is at the end of the road when, when the tenant buyer buys and I get paid and the seller gets paid. He's happy, sure. I'm happy, the buyer's happy, everyone, everyone is happy. So you really didn't make much money on the front end, mm-hmm. but on the back end you're going to make a, right. a nice chunk of money. Mm-hmm. Great. What kind of what kind of numbers? Um, probably close to twenty five. Twenty five grand. Yeah. And cash flow, yeah. a couple hundred bucks or three hundred and seventy eight dollars a month. Oh, that's, that's <laughs> it changes as taxes go up. And how many cents? <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> 
No, that's a great deal. So three hundred seventy-eight dollars yeah. in cash flow, and you have a twenty-five thousand kicker on the back end. That's a great deal. Yeah. Yep. I'll do. I'll do. I'm, I'm blown away when I listen to this. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, you're I, blown I, away I, just because I, you're I, on a windy deck, Larry. Right? <laughs> you know what? When, yeah. when he meant when when Zach mentioned sandwich lease option, I thought that's when we lost you. Yeah. <laughs> he maybe went to the all you can eat buffet. <laughs> well, he's sitting at a bar. He's got a menu in front of him. He, he, I figured out I'd order a sandwich when I hear that word. I would do it too. <laughs> Can I get the lease option with that? Yeah, right. <laughs> Go ahead, well, Larry. What, what I was going to say was, could, could you could you imagine? You know, this is I'm listening to Zach's first deal. You know, I mean, obviously I know about, it, but I'm listening to Zach's first deal and how, how he describes it. And can you imagine any one of us, the three of us, as that first deal? I mean, all of our first deals were pretty traditional compared to what Zach just described. And the only reason Zach was able to do that was because he, he basically uh, used our experiences. To, to learn how to do this. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. And, and and I got to say, Zach, there's one other thing that I'm really am, I'm amazed about, and I didn't know you were going to be here today, uh, and it, it blows my mind, that you are also the top agent in our agency. Well, Tell us you. about your, your real estate license and that idea. Yeah, let's talk about some of your recent successes. Where do we start, getting the license or, or what I've been up yeah, to? Let's yeah, well, let's, let's talk about why you decided to get your license. Well, I decided to get my license because I loved – learning about real estate and it was a natural thing for me when when jeremy and phil said hey I'll, we'll sponsor you to get your license I, I jumped on the opportunity right away and i went and i took the course and i did it in three weekends you know it it's 30 hours in one course and 30 hours in another course it's 60 hours and you you do the classes you can do them online you can you can do them um i i prefer to do them in person and uh you do the course you take the test and you get your license, and it, it's as it's as simple as that. If you're willing to learn it, you can you can get your license. So I got my license, and I I have it with Addicted to Real Estate, and you better. <laughs> and we we and we didn't have we didn't have the program where you pay for your license at that time. Yeah, but we so did. You actually it. paid for your license. Well, well, I, was, I was a and, pilot. Right, so. Yeah, he was the pilot. He was the, right. well, he was the oh, guinea oh, pig oh, for okay, that program. Okay, okay. We did okay. we did pay okay, for great, his great, license. Great. We did. Okay, great. So, so, so we paid for your license. Were, were you excited about that? I was. I was thrilled. I, I mean, there's really not a better opportunity than that. You know, if you're willing to do the work, you can you can get somewhere. Yeah, and this is this is kind of speaks to the symbiotic relationship of the real estate agency as well as our investment company. In that, when we get people that want to sell their house and it just doesn't make sense for us to buy it, we would refer that oftentimes to for somebody to list the house. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if Zach was uh, was there and had some time to handle it, we might refer the listing to Zach, and Zach would get the listing. Somebody wants to sell their house. They're ready to sell it. We just can't buy it because it doesn't make sense. Maybe it's out of our area. Maybe it's uh, too expensive to make sense as a rental. Maybe it doesn't need it, need many repairs, so they're not willing to dis- discount it for us to do like a flip or something. So um, so Zach, you know, I, I think has benefited from a number of those yes. deals. Yeah. Yes. And I'm sure you, you even benefited from people walking in saying they wanted to sell their house. And you know, and, and none of us were interested in buying it. And you said, "Hey, I'll list it for you." Yes, and and it, and that is a, a common occurrence through the office. You know, it's a it's an endless source of leads, and it, you just have to know where the lead is going to go. It, if it's going to go into a purchase for the company or or uh, or a listing for the, for the agency. The only thing we yeah, have and to you're, get and on you're Zach usually about. hanging out in the Line Lexington office, right? So I need a guy like you to hang out in the Hatboro office. So if anybody out there wants to get their license and hang out in the Hatboro office. And learn like Zach did. I'm going to pay for your real estate license, and uh, you can call me. You can even call me on the cruise. I'll answer the phone. Two one five three seven eight nine one nine zero. Call me, and I will pay for your real estate license. So Zach, tell us about the uh, recent flip that turned into a wholesale deal that the three of us did together. Well, we let's see. This this deal was interesting because there was a lady that uh, needed to sell her house, and she needed to sell it because she was the only one living in this in this big house, had bills, had some other expenses, and she really wanted to downsize. And she saw that as a challenge because she, her house was not in a condition to throw it up on the market and, and sell it retail. It was not that type of deal. And we, Jeremy and I negotiated with her to, uh, to purchase the house for uh, a new property of her liking and, and choosing, free and clear, 
and to uh, to to really solve the problem that she was in with her, with her current home. We were willing to buy that and uh, and pay that mortgage off and find her someone else that she wanted. So, we, so she came to us for yes. she came to us basically saying, "I, I want to trade." You, you know, mm-hmm. Zach Zach was was smart enough to ask her. You know, when you sell this, where are you going? Mm-hmm. And she had uh, described the kind of house that she wanted. And Zach, being a real estate agent, was able to look that up. And we we made a, a pretty cool deal. So we, I took her around. I showed her the properties that she was interested in. We found one. We we put an offer on it for her. We we got it under contract. We got a good deal through through our ability to to negotiate the right deal for for that. And we settled on on both properties the same day. We purchased hers and <clears throat> purchased her her new property and purchased her old property for ourselves. And once we we acquired it, we we put a loan on it, and um, then we we renovated it and then sold. Yeah, the neat thing was just uh, there's a few moving parts here, but mm-hmm. we we essentially borrowed private money on her house in order to have the cash to buy the new house. So and then we just did really like a trade. Right, so she never had to get a closing. mortgage or anything for no, the new yeah, house. She's no. free and clear now. It's free and clear. Free right. and clear. So, so so she had enough equity in the primary residence that she wanted to downsize from to buy the smaller newer property that fit her needs. So and she had a mortgage right. on it. So yeah. so basically it's funny because people right. were I think Larry was laughing. I forget who I was telling this to. But our purchase and sale agreement didn't even have a dollar sign on it. I remember leaving that appointment saying, Jeremy, we, we didn't agree on a sales price here. There's, there's no number on the contract. It's yeah. just, it's it was, just yeah. we'll, we'll, a mutual. We'll pay off your loan mm-hmm. and find you a suitable replacement house right. that we both agree upon. And that was it. Sign yeah. here. Press yeah. R. <laughs> and, and she was thrilled. <laughs> Actually, we have if you go on the addicted uh, – if you go into the um, our Facebook, Facebook page, page, you can see a testimonial from this lady. Who was just thrilled to death? She said, "Wow, this was so easy." Well, I didn't well, she to. should have been thrilled because yeah. you know the the alternative. Any other uh, real estate agent that walked into her house would have gone for the listing to lock up her house right. and left it up to her to go to a bank and get a mortgage. And and I don't even know if she would have qualified. It, it for would one. have been. It would have been. No, I don't think she had the income yeah. to right. qualify. She didn't have the income. No. So she n- that approach would not have worked. So what what made the real difference was that. The, all your traditional agents out there who just know one way to do everything, and we have many creative methods because we're investors, so we know how to get the deals done. That's what really made the difference. It did. And our private lender was really a good catalyst in this deal oh, because it, it, it allowed us to have the cash to buy this place for her. And, you know, if, if she was just going the traditional method, what do you do? Do you sell your house first and then move into an apartment, right. and now you have the cash, and then you go buy something. I mean, that's probably what, what would have happened. You know? right, so let's talk bucks, you know, because we we got to we got to wrap this segment up soon. Let's talk bucks. How much money did did we make off of this deal? It was roughly twelve per person per. Right. per okay, so we made we chopped it three ways. Right. Right. About thirty six grand. Something. So we like that. made thirty six thousand yeah. dollars off a deal, and we helped her. Mm-hmm. Okay, she would have never been able to do this deal by herself. We made some money off of the yeah. resale of her house, but right. also the other money that was kind of made in the deal was the discount that we got on her right. replacement home. I think it was listed for what 150, and we got it for 120. Close Something to like yes, that. 120. 120. We were paying so we, cash. Yeah, so we mm-hmm. we made a nice deal there, and we made money on the buying side, yeah. made money on the selling side. And by the time you paid all the expenses yeah. and costs, and the private lender got paid, you know, you know and it was and great and profit. The really special thing that we did here is okay. So Zach finds this deal. So because he found it and because he brought it to us, what did we bring to the table? Well, we put up the money, okay? We went to one of our private lenders. We put up the money to get the deal done. But what we also did is we used our experience to to find the buyer on the back end of the wholesale deal, which essentially was a wholesale deal, and uh, and everybody made a little bit of money. So we made $12,000 each. So if you're out there and you've got a deal but you don't know how to get it done, Check us out at addictedtorealestate.com. Give us a call, 267-988-2000. Maybe we can figure out a way to help you with your deal, and maybe we can all make out real well on it. Well, that was a great story, Zach, and uh, you're going to be able to stick around with us? I certainly will. Okay, stick around for the rest of the show. You've uh, been listening to Addicted to Real Estate Radio. We'll be right back. 
As a real estate agent, you know that most people buy a house once every seven years. Imagine working with clients that buy seven houses every year. At Addicted to Real Estate, they teach you how to work with investors because they are investors. Located in Montgomeryville, Hatboro, and Huntington Valley, work at an agency built for investors, buy investors, and finally learn how to invest yourself. Addicted to Real Estate Agency. Call them now, 215-321-SELL. 215-321-SELL. Have you heard about the recent low mortgage rates? Have you started thinking about refinancing your home? Why not work with a mortgage lender who puts you first? Thomas Farris at First Choice Loan Services Incorporated will provide you personalized service to make sure your home financing meets your needs both now and in the future. Call Thomas Farris at 215-983-8649 today and learn how the current low interest rates may mean it's the right time for you to buy or refinance. Call Thomas Farris at 215-983-8649. Thomas Farris, NMLS, number is 785398. First Choice Loan Services Incorporated, NMLS, number 210764, equal housing lender. Hi, my name is Phil Falcone. I wrote a book called Addicted to Real Estate, Why I Can't Stop and Why You Should Start. And if you'd love to see an investment book written by a Philadelphian about investing in Philadelphia, I'm your man. You can check out my book at addictedtorealestate.com with the number two. I have a free web TV show there. I have free investment forms for real estate investors. And I have my book that you can check out, Addicted to Real Estate, Why I Can't Stop and Why You Should Start. And the website is addicted to real estate with the number two dot com. Hi, I'm Larry Steinhaus, and I'm addicted to real estate. Are you a real estate investor? Do you know the value of having a real estate license? It's awesome. You get to make even more money and get exposed to deals you probably would have missed. Well, today is your lucky day. I will pay for your real estate license. Find out more by calling me at 215-378-9190. That's right. I will pay for your license. Call now, 215-378-9190. Addicted to real estate, bridging the gap between investors and realtors. 215-378-9190. I'm Phil Falcone from Executech Suites. Do you have a voicemail machine answering your business calls during the day? Oh, please tell me it's not true. I have an answering service for you that only costs $99 a month. We're real humans. That's right. We have live humans answering the phone in the name of your company and patching the calls to you for only $99 a month. And there are no contracts, so you can try it out anytime you like and cancel it whenever you like. Executech Suites, 215 942 I'm Phil Falcone from Executech Suites. I got a question for you. What do you get for $4.95 a month at Executech Suites? You get an office big enough for one person. You get the furniture in that office. You get the telephone on the desk. You get the telephone number. You get the fax number. You get the internet. You get two full-time receptionists to answer the phone in the name of your company and patch the calls to you, whether you're in the office, in your car, or at home sleeping on a couch. You get the conference rooms, you get the mailboxes, you get the printer, the copy, the scanner, you get the janitorial service, the utilities, and free coffee. I know it's hard to believe that you could get all those things for $495 a month, but it's true. 67 Buck Road in Huntington Valley, Executech Suites. Give us a call, 215-942-7701, 215-942-7701. Welcome back to Addicted to Real Estate Radio. This is Jeremy Ricci, and we're going to talk a little bit in this segment. You heard Zach talk about his his first deal, which is a sandwich lease option. Yeah. Very creative first deal. Sure was. Um, Phil and I are going to, I guess, uh, just give you a little bit of how we got started and our first deals. What about Larry? What are you cutting him out of it for? Larry, are you still there? I'm still here, man. Okay. Well, do, you want... do you hear that I'm hesitation? I'm about to order a glass of wine. You, yeah. Could I, you... I order you one? Yeah. I think you're eating a sandwich because there was a little bit of a delay there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Larry, you want to you want to tell us first about what your very first deal we and uh, how it went down real quick? Yeah, actually, my very first deal was kind of interesting. I was, uh, I was actually, uh, you know, I was. Uh, this is funny. I was working out in the morning one day. It was, you know, seven o'clock in the morning. And I'm riding a bicycle. I'm, I'm 18, 19 years old, maybe 18 and a half, and I'm riding riding the bicycle. And and uh, if you've seen me in a while, you notice that I haven't ridden the bicycle in quite a while. But anyway, and I see this advertisement. <laughs> I grab one of those real estate magazines, and I see this advertisement for a two-family house in Easton, Pennsylvania, uh, listed for twenty-six thousand dollars. And I know I want to get into real estate, but I have no idea how to do this. So I called the listing agent, 
and she shows me the property. I go through it, and literally it's the only one she showed me. And I said, okay, I'll take it. And she goes, I need a check for $500. And I said, I have 100 So I wrote her a check for $100. And as I'm leaving, I'm going, how am I going to come up with the rest of this money? I have no idea. So as I started to think about it, I started to come up with things. And that's just funny. You, we talked about the credit cards before. Uh, the down payment I got from credit card advances and the loan, I got a traditional loan from a bank. And I, and I closed on my first deal. And it was, it was, just, it was great. And I sold the house. I remember I sold the house a year later for $14,000 more than I paid for it. But ever since then, I realized that that was a big mistake to sell that house. Did you I have had $300 a month time? positive cash flow. Okay, it was ready. Sorry? So you had a tenant in there. Yeah, I had two tenants in there. It was a two-family okay. house. Well, there's a good lesson and in I, that. And when I, you, if you hold it for a year, you get the short, uh, long-term capital gains. That's a good uh, – at least yeah, you kept yeah, it well, one yeah, year. I, and know, I was young. I didn't – yeah, I was young. I hadn't paid taxes yet, you know, or really didn't pay any substantial taxes yet. Didn't know much about it. I didn't know much about buy and hold. I mean, I'm a big buy and hold advocate now, because and probably because of that lesson. Well, so that, I, so now I keep, them, humans, I keep them as long as I can. That's how humans learn, right? When you when you're learning how to yeah. walk and you fall and you bang your head on the coffee table, you learn to stay away from the coffee table <laughs> until you get some balance. Yeah, exactly. Right. That's, <laughs> We humans learn from our mistakes. And maybe we, well, addicted to real estate, will try to keep you, the new investor, from making mistakes. Oh, well, that's, a, that's a huge benefit, well, too, first of is all, learning so from other that people's... That was a great mistake. Yeah. Yeah, it yeah, was. So that was a great mistake. I made $14,000 and, and had positive cash flow for a year. So, you know, I, I like those kind of mistakes. I've yeah. made worse mistakes. That was a good mistake. <laughs> I'm sure you have. We all have. We all have. <laughs> what was your very first... Phil, what was your very first deal? I'd rather, before I talk about my first deal, I want to talk about the mindset before I bought my first deal. Got it. Um, I came up with this. I, here's what I did. When I was a teenager and I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my life, it occurred to me that most businesses do the same thing. They buy something for one price and they sell it to somebody else at a higher price and they make the profit. And it occurred to me that if you were going to be doing that, you might as well be buying and selling the product that costs the most amount of money, okay? A cruise ship would be something good to buy and sell. It probably cost a, <laughs> a, a couple of hundred million dollars, but uh, I, that seemed a little bit too big for me. So I decided, what is the biggest purchase in most people's lives? Well, it's their house. And I already felt like I had a good understanding of real estate because I used to play Monopoly all the time. As a matter of fact, people think I'm kidding when I when I tell them that, but I, I learned about the real estate business from playing Monopoly. In fact, there's a picture of me playing Monopoly with my mother, my father, and my brother in 1975 in my new book coming out next week, which is called How to Buy Houses with None of Your Own Money. And in that picture, if you look closely enough, you will see I am the one with the most properties. <laughs> okay, it's a buy everything you land on, right? Okay, yeah. I didn't have the most. I didn't have the most money, but I had the most properties. See, I was building wealth at nine years old. All right, but it occurred to me that if you're going to be buying and selling things, why not buy and sell houses? All right. Quick example. Know anybody who's a flea marketer? I like to go flea marketing. It's fun. It's kind of like a, a secret mission and a search for maybe something cool that you're going to find. Now, I know people who would buy a, uh, a, a an audio cassette for a dollar and sell it to somebody for two dollars, and they were so excited about the deal that they just made. I said, okay, well, why don't I just translate that to real estate? Why don't I buy a house for $100,000, sell it to somebody for $130,000? That beats the heck out of a, a whole Dollars, truckload yeah, of uh, video cassettes. So you get the idea. Good practice negotiating at those flea markets, too. It's a great thing it is. to practice negotiating. It definitely, Even if you don't want what you're buying, even better. <laughs> right. And I, I think uh, when you go to flea markets, you better be ready to negotiate because no matter what the price is, you never say yes. Yes. So absolutely, I agree with you. It's great business experience. Right? And then uh, when I was finally ready to start buying real estate at the age of 23 in 1989, I came out of the gate swinging like crazy. I, um, I bought uh, approximately $250,000 worth of real estate, two properties in my first 11 months. Uh, I bought a duplex, and then I bought a duplex I turned into a triplex. So I had five units, 11 months into the business, cash flowing. And I still, here's the smartest thing I did. When I bought my first duplex, I didn't move into it. 
I was still living with my parents. I did not move into it. I said, and it wasn't so easy. I was 24 years old or 23 years old at the point. It wasn't so easy to be living with the parents. But I said, you know what? I'm going to hang in here for one more deal. And so 11 months came around. I bought my second deal, and then I moved into the second deal. Just because I knew if I moved into the first one, I would never get the second one for a much longer period of time. So I, I bit the bullet, so to speak. Sorry, Mom. And... Uh, hung with him for 11 more months and allowed me to buy two properties. I think uh, I think Zach did the same thing. Did you uh, did you do the the lease option deal? Zach before? lived with my mom. <laughs> <laughs> How the hell did you work that out? <laughs> no, I didn't live with your mom. Didn't you, <laughs> but then you didn't you have the lease option deal before you actually had your own yes, primary residence? Yes, the, yeah. the lease option deal I had before I bought my own house. Yeah. I was still living at my girlfriend's parents' house at the time. Keep going. Don't so um so my my uh, I, I did the same thing. I actually had several investment properties before I had my own primary residence. I was renting um, an apartment. That but I have two first deals. The first one that was a first deal was um, what I thought was my first deal was 2002. I bought a house, found a, a vacant, ugly house, like one of these hoarding syndrome houses, had an orange sticker on the window. I got it under contract for 50 grand. I had no idea what to do after that. I decided, well, if somebody would buy it for me for 65 grand. Then I would just walk away and not rehab it. So, um, so uh, I I found a buyer. I found a a willing buyer. I think I found him when I was in the dentist office. One of the dental hygienists' husband wanted a rehab project. So therefore, I um, I sold it to him. I, fifteen grand in fifteen days. I I bought it for fifty. Sold it for sixty five. Made fifteen grand after I just quit my job. Uh, you know, burn the bridges without looking back. <laughs> so I thought that was my first real estate deal. But as I look back, I actually figured that my first real estate deal was when I was 17 years old. I was 17 years old. I wasn't even old enough. It was January. So my birthday is in January, but it, I hadn't turned 18 yet. And it was just enough time. For, I didn't, wasn't able to sign a lease. Right, right. So I found two guys that were old enough to sign a lease and I brokered the deal. So found, found, found an apartment for 550, got each of them to pay 225. So I was left paying a hundred dollars a month <laughs> out of thrift. So that's when I look back. That was my first real estate deal. It was a hundred dollars a month. And I figured, yeah, what the heck, maybe I can do better and buy some more houses so that I don't have to pay anything for my own residence. So, so anyway, you know, I do have to, I do have to say, I noticed a pattern here. I also, when I bought my first piece of property, I was living in an apartment and I had a roommate in the apartment. So it sounds like all of us have made the realization that buying a piece of real estate or investment is much better than buying a piece of real estate to live in. Sure. I mean, it's nice to live somewhere, but, uh, but you know, having real estate that yeah, makes right. you money yeah. uh, is also, is also a, a, a great thing. Well, listen, guys, I mean, we're going to have to yeah. wrap this show up. But uh, if you're out there and you're listening to us and you'd like to learn about real estate investing and you'd like to come hang your license with us or you'd like to talk to us about having us pay for your license – Stop by one of our stores. We're in Hatboro at the corner of Byberry and York. We're on 309 right across the street from the uh, Zodo's Diner. And we're in Huntington Valley at Buck and County Line Road. Come check us out. Let's talk to you about paying for your uh, ability to go get your real estate license and joining us and being able to tell somebody about your first amazing deal soon. I'm Phil Falcone from Addicted to Real Estate. Thanks for listening, and we'll talk to you next week. To say you gotta know some.